Hello and welcome to the second session of Bruca Lecona video series. My name is Urban Muraus and I'm the sales director of Bruca Lecona. I will guide you through all our sessions on different topics during next time. Today we will focus on focus variation, our core technology. Yes. And I was thinking about the best possible guest for this session and there is just one person, it's Franz Helmli, our head of R&D. Welcome Franz and thank you for your time. Hello, nice to be here. Um, Franz is the best possible person to talk about uh, technology of Bruca Licona because he is really a team member since the foundation of our company in 2001. And he is really the mastermind in terms of core technology and product development. The second question for me was, where should we record this session? And the idea was, let's go to the heart of the R&D, let's go to the system room. Yeah. Um, and Franz, maybe you can tell us, what are you doing uh, with your team here on a daily basis? So the system room is the room where the developers uh, develop the software, develop uh, the hardware, where they test the software, so they really work with the instruments. And on the rear here you see the infinite focus system, an older version, you see the optics and the driving axis here, it's an open system. In the middle you have the infinite focus SL, an instrument uh, mainly for the shop floor. And on the other side you see the newest developments of the infinite focus in the 5 axis configuration. And uh, let us talk about today's agenda. Um, we will talk about focus variation itself. And then in the second part of the session, uh, Franz will also talk about the extension of this technology, the vertical yeah, focus, focus probing. probing. Yeah. Yeah? Um, and he presented, um, uh, he prepared a nice presentation for us. And uh, yeah, Franz, please let us know the details. How does this technology work? Okay, let's start. So focus variation, it consists of two words focus and variation. And that's exactly what we're doing. Uh, we're varying the focus and by analyzing the images we get during this process, we are measuring 3D. Let's take a look at these graphics. Here is a guy with a digital camera. And um, I think you will know it when you take an image, some parts are in focus and some parts are out of focus. And mostly the parts you want are in focus. That's typically uh, uh, something you want. In our situation, the guy focuses on the car at first. Uh, and then you see that the tree is out of focus. When then the guy with the digital camera goes in the direction of the car, he will realize that the tree gets in focus and the car gets out of focus. And when the guy is clever, he has recorded the steps he was going to the car. And uh, this number of steps is the distance between the car and the tree. So he has measured something uh, and this is focus variation. So by varying the focus, recording the steps, uh, then he can measure something or you can measure something. Some of you asked the question maybe why is something out of focus and why is something in focus? And this is because of the light cone. This is because of the numerical aperture of the optical setup. On the graphics here you see an optical setup where you have lenses and the lenses form a light cone. And the light cone can be very small, small angle, small numerical aperture or the light cone can be larger, a larger angle, a larger numerical aperture. When the aperture is larger the images are crispier, the images uh, have more information but also the depth of field, so what is in focus is smaller and this really helps us for focus variation. If you have a part that is in the focus plane, this is exactly there where all the light rays are crossing each other, then the images of this part is sharp. When the object is more close to the lens, then the images are not sharp, they are unsharp. And this is then used for the whole setup. So let's take a look at the complete system, how it really works. On the graphics here, you see uh, the optics, you see the lenses, you see the sensor and you see an object. 
and uh, you can also see that the whole optical setup is moving upwards and when it's moving upwards a linear encoder is also mounted somewhere that records the steps that records the lengths that the optic has moved and then the software is acquiring the images from the sensor and is requiring the data from the high accuracy linear encoder and combining this and generating a 3D data set. Um, okay, so this is how it works. So let's take a look at a real optics. This is an optics from one of our former generation infinite focus system and um, it has all the components that you need here for focus variation built in. First you have an LED, it generates light and it also gets hot and therefore you have a cooler on the LED. Then the light of the LED is focused through lenses and mirrors and half transparent mirrors here through the objective lens to the sample. So the sample is somewhere here, moving up and down and then the sample reflects the light in all directions and some of the light is gathered by the objective lens and again through the half transparent mirror, through the lens system uh, back to the uh, imager, to the, to the camera itself. And the camera has a high speed interface that is connected to the PC. When you take a look at the lenses here, you can see that some of the lenses have a small diameter and some of the lenses have got a large diameter. In combination with the working distance, this will uh, generate the light cone, which is the numerical aperture. And also, some of the lenses have the numerical aperture directly written on the lenses. So the next step is that we go to an instrument and we will take a look at the live situation with a live sample and we will see how the focus is varying when we change the distance and how a real result looks like. We are now in front of the Infinite Focus G5 Plus. Uh, the sample I use here uh, is interesting. It produces some regions that are in focus and some regions that are out of focus. And the parts that are in focus, they form a circle here. And when I move up and down, this circle change. And some of you might now understand what this sample is. It is a sphere. So let's focus at the center, for example. When you look at the center, everything is out of focus. When I move the center upwards, it gets a little sharper. It gets even more sharp, now it's sharp. And then when I continue moving upwards, it gets unsharp again. So this variation of focus, it builds a focus curve that has a maximum. And by analyzing and finding the maximum in this curve, we can do this 3D measurement. I'm now starting the procedure of measuring. So now the vertical scanning happens for every point. This curve will be generated, the maximum will be found, and the 3D data set will be calculated. Here we see the result of the measurement. You can see it is a sphere, as we have expected. I can also switch to pseudocolor, where the height of the data set is coded into color. And this data set is now uh, able to give the operator the information of the form and of the roughness. So further processing can be done. So back on the table again. Franz, thank you very much for the explanation in the first part of our session. You're welcome. Um, I think you explained it in a quite simple way, so it seems that you understand the technology. Yeah? <laughs> You're right. <laughs> I hope so. Um, but uh, now, <clears throat> as we have always challenges in the sales team, our customers are requesting a, ro a lot of features. And it was always the discussion, what is about the sidewalls? Okay. What is about more than 90 degrees? What is about the comparison to tactile systems that can uh, come from the top and touch the sidewalls? So we gave you a challenge a few years ago, and um, I think you made a perfect job with your team and uh, you accepted the challenge and uh, you have a solution for this and this is now the second part of our session please explain us the solution that you have for this kind of applications okay thank you so the solution is vertical focus probing 
uh, when we have the optics here and we use uh, focus radiation, we can measure the top surface, we can measure the edge break, we can measure the angles, form and so on. But we cannot measure the side walls. When we have uh, the software extension vertical focus probing, we can also measure the side walls here and I show you now how it works. On the first diagram you see the measurement of a height step with our instrument and you can see that by using focus variation you cannot measure the 90 degree part of the height step. That's not what we want. Um, on this diagram you see the same measurement situation when we use vertical focus probing. You get the 90 degree part of the height step. Uh, so to explain how it works, I want to show you different uh, situations. Uh, let's start with a flat sample. Um, on the diagram you see a flat sample. We project the light with coaxial illumination through the objective lens to the sample. The sample then reflects the light in all directions. We assume in this case diffuse reflection. Um, so we make use of the full numerical aperture. The next situation here shows the situation when we tilt the sample a little bit more. In this case, we also make use of the full numerical aperture. So, nearly the same information. So, let's tilt up even more. Let's go to 90 degree. In this diagram, you see the 90 degree situation. And here you can see that we get back light from the surface. But we don't use the full numerical aperture. It's not possible. Um, but we make use of the half numerical aperture. We get back light. The light is not so much, it's less light, but it's enough light for our instrument to work with. And now let's do even more. We tilt more than 90 degrees and now you can see in the diagram even if the angle is more than 90 degrees we get backlight. And this depends on the numerical aperture. When we have larger numerical aperture we can measure even more than 90 degrees. If the numerical aperture is lower we can measure 90 degrees and maybe one or two degrees more. So also here the numerical aperture is very critical for our measurement instrument. So how does, how does the whole instrument, the whole setup works? In this um, animation you see the optical setup consisting of a CCD sensor, uh, the optics, the sample and then the software and the PC that analyzes the data to get 3D information. So the optics scans in vertical direction and the computer with the software gets the data from the camera, it gets the data from the linear encoder and for every slice where we get information from the camera we analyze the points that are in focus. And by using the points that are in focus we build up our 3D data set. And uh, this is how it works. So let's go to an instrument and we take a look how the image looks like when we are measuring a 90 degree uh, situation. So we are here at the Infinite Focus G5 that also features the vertical focus probing software module. Uh, the sample I put in is a vertical um, slope on a metal part and on the live view you can see that there is a section that is in focus. This is only a small part and the rest of the live view is out of focus. So we are looking at the vertical slope and when I change the position of the sensor in vertical direction you see that this behavior changes but the position doesn't change. So we are focusing on the vertical slope and what I do now is I start the measurements. Uh, now the system is scanning and storing all the points that are in focus for each position and combining this to a 3D data set. And in a few seconds we will see the result data set. And here it is. We will see, or we can see a vertical wall that was now measured and we can also see small variations on the surface. We see a waviness, we see the surface roughness and this data set can now be used for further processing. For example, to measure the flatness or to measure the distance between two of those data sets. So now you have seen how vertical focus probing works on a real application. Vertical focus probing is mainly used for coordinate metrology. In this field, the famous ISO DEN 360 is used to measure the performance of such an instrument. 
The main procedure is to measure the distance between spheres. In this diagram, you can see how a tactile coordinate instrument measures the distance by probing the spheres on the horizon. With focus variation and vertical focus probing, this can also be done now. So, the summary is that vertical focus probing really enables many new applications in metrology. And I'm very proud that our R&D at Burkhali Kauna has solved this problem and has realized such a good product. Urban, what do you think? I totally agree with you and I would really like to thank you. I am sure that our customers will appreciate that we talked about uh, this deeply yeah. uh, in the, the details mm -hmm. about the technology and that we are also open um, showing the know-how that we are having in this technology. Uh, so I would like to thank you very much for your participation uh, in the second session of our Bruca Alicona video series and it's already time to invite you to the next session, to the third one. Um, it will go online in some weeks and uh, I will talk about the product portfolio of Bruker Alicona. So we will have a look on how differentiate uh, the system itself um, in our product portfolio. Please follow our channel and if you want you are really welcome to let some comments on the bottom. Thank you very much and goodbye. Goodbye.